Soon after I accepted Almighty God's work of the last days, I watched a film titled The Mystery of Godliness, the sequel, on the Church of Almighty God's website. Some of the film's pastors and elders didn't accept Almighty God's work and did whatever they could to stop believers from seeking the true way. This troubled me, as I thought of pastors and elders as devout leaders who served the Lord. They always taught us to watch for the Lord and wait patiently so as not to miss the Lord's coming. If they found out the Lord Jesus returned, they should accept him with joy. Why would they stop us? Right. right. I thought of Pastor Jin, who was the leader at my old church. He was a caring, spiritual guide and yearned for the Lord to return. If he knew that the Lord really returned, he'd be over the moon and would accept it right away. I decided to equip myself with the truth so I could share it with him. But things didn't turn out the way I'd thought. And the film's plot played out before my very eyes, this time for real. What happened? One day, Pastor Jin came to see me at our fruit stall and asked me, right there, have you been going to the Church of Almighty God? He then said some terrible and false things about the church, saying, that church says that God has returned in the flesh. That's impossible. I was so surprised and upset to hear him say this. I thought, the Lord teaches us not to judge others. You don't know anything about that church and haven't looked into Almighty God's work of the last days. How can you condemn it so quickly? That's right. right. Yes. But then I thought to myself, I guess he hasn't heard the words of Almighty God, so he won't know it's the truth. If he knew that Almighty God is the Lord Jesus returned, who's bringing us all truths which cleanse and save man, I just know he'll accept it. So I said to Pastor Jin, Pastor, you say the Lord can't return again in the flesh. Is this based on the Lord's words? Did he ever say that in scripture? He confidently replied to my question. It says, in fact, in the Gospel of Matthew, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. In great glory, the Lord will come again, returning on a cloud for everyone to behold. The whole religious world recognizes this fact. Every Christian is waiting for him to come on a cloud. So how could he return in the flesh? I patiently heard him out, and then I said, Pastor, there are many prophecies in the Bible about the Lord's return. It's close-minded and wrong to cling to one verse. Yes. Yes, there are prophecies of the Lord returning on a cloud, but there are many about his secret coming too. Yes. yes. Such as, if therefore you shall not watch, I'll come as a thief, and you shall not know what hour I will come on you. Behold, I come as a thief, and at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go you out to meet him. Amen. Amen. These verses prophesy the Lord coming back as a thief, returning in secret at night, with few knowing about it. If the Lord returned openly on a cloud, wouldn't everyone see him then? There'd be no need to cry out or testify then. Yes. True. If the Lord indeed openly returned on a cloud as we had initially believed, how do you explain the prophecies of his coming in secret? Right. The Lord is faithful and his words are never empty. What he says will always happen. Yes. yes. So we say for certain his return will happen in two stages. First he comes in secret, then reveals himself to all mankind. Long ago, God became flesh to work in secret. He is Almighty God, Christ of the last days. Yes. yes. He performs his work of judgment beginning with God's house, expresses all truths which cleanse and save man, and will make a group of overcomers. When God's secret work is completed, he will unleash many disasters, reward good people, and punish the wicked. On a cloud, he'll return and appear openly to all peoples. 
At that time, all those who resist Almighty God will be swept away by the disasters, weeping and wailing. That's, That's true. true. Right. This finally fulfills Revelation 1-7 that says, Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Those who recognize Almighty God's words truly as God's voice turn to him and accept God's judgment and are cleansed, will be protected by God from the disasters and rightfully enter God's kingdom. That's mm -hmm. right. God's work in secret is the work to save mankind. When he appears to man openly, it'll be too late to accept him. That will be when the wicked will be punished. It's true. I understood all this from reading and accepting Almighty God's words. Thanks, Thanks, be, to God. Thanks be to God. I've realized only God can reveal the truth and unveil this mystery, and Almighty God is the Lord Jesus returned. Then I told him that I prayed he would look into Almighty God's work of the last days. Oh, and what did he say to that? Yes. yes. He just gave me a dirty look and then said to me, you don't know that much about the Bible, and yet you're preaching to me? Isn't what you know about the Bible taught by me? It was really disappointing to be spoken to by him that way. Was this the Pastor Jin I'd known? He always seemed, at least to me, to be a humble man. He would tell all of us to be like the wise virgins and prepare to welcome the Lord when he returns. But now he wasn't looking for the Lord's return at all and was even sneering at it. I just didn't understand and I really wanted to help him. So I said, you know much more about the Bible than I do. So you should have a humble heart and look out for the Lord's return. You should check it out. Every single one of the Pharisees knew the scriptures by heart and thought knowing God was the same as knowing the scriptures. But when the Lord Jesus came to work, they didn't investigate it. They clung only to the scriptures, thinking that only the one called Messiah could be God, and only someone who could liberate them from the Romans could be God. Because of their notions, they condemned the Lord Jesus' work, and then, in the end, had him crucified. They offended God and brought on his punishment. Mm -hmm. right. right. I then said, do you think that if someone knows a lot about the Bible, it means that they know God and won't themselves resist the Lord? We must learn from the Pharisees and their mistakes and not just flat out condemn Almighty God's work of the last days. Yes. 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 We must keep an open mind and always listen for God's voice. Only then can we truly welcome the Lord. That's right. right. Seeing I wasn't listening to his advice, he said bitterly, since you've been so devout all your years as a believer, I'll pray for you. Leave the church of Almighty God. He then angrily stomped off. After he left, I thought, why isn't he taking the Lord's return more seriously? He always tells us to seek with a humble heart. So why is he behaving so out of character? I'd always felt that Pastor Jin was my spiritual parent in faith. I could ask him just about anything. And he'd patiently answer, always with a Bible verse. He'd ask how my family was, how they were all doing, and would pray for us when we had problems. He'd believed in the Lord forever, working and giving himself fully. Wasn't this all done for the Lord's return? I would wait. All I had to do was talk to him about God's work of the last days. Yes. Yes. Mm. A couple of days later, Pastor Jin came back to our fruit stand. I thought he must have looked at the Bible and now realized how the Lord returns and works. But no, to my surprise, he said, Deacon Lee, the Bible says, you men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This Jesus, which is taken from you to heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. This is very clear and as plain as day. 
the Lord Jesus ascended to heaven on a white cloud in the form of a Jewish man. So he'll come back on a white cloud in the form of a Jewish man. You've been lied to. You must turn back. He was holding on to the idea of the Lord coming back to us on a cloud, judging and condemning Almighty God's work. I didn't understand and thought, so many prophecies exist in the Bible about the Lord's return. Why isn't he looking into them at all? Right. right. Just then, a passage of Almighty God's words came to me. I read it to the pastor. I tell you, those who believe in God because of the signs are surely the kind that shall be destroyed. Those who are incapable of receiving the words of Jesus who has returned to flesh are surely the progeny of hell, the descendants of the archangel, the kind that shall be destroyed forever. Many people may not care what I say, but I still want to tell every so-called saint who follows Jesus that when you see Jesus descend from the heaven upon a white cloud with your own eyes, this will be the public appearance of the Son of Righteousness. Perhaps that will be a time of great excitement for you. Yet you should know that the time when you witness Jesus descend from the heaven is also the time when you go down to hell to be punished. That will be the time of the end of God's management plan, and it will be when God rewards the good and punishes the wicked. For the judgment of God will have ended before man sees signs when there is only the expression of truth. Those who accept the truth and do not seek signs and thus have been purified shall have returned before the throne of God and entered the Creator's embrace. Only those who persist in the belief that the Jesus who does not ride upon a white cloud is a false Christ shall be subjected to everlasting punishment. For they only believe in the Jesus who exhibits signs but do not acknowledge the Jesus who proclaims severe judgment and releases the true way of life. And so it can only be that Jesus deals with them when he openly returns upon a white cloud. They are too stubborn, too confident in themselves, too arrogant. How could such degenerates be rewarded by Jesus? Amen. 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 God's words are so clear. How did Pastor Jin respond? Yeah. yeah. He was very angry and said to me, The Bible is very clear on how the Lord will return to us. Why would you need to read any other book? If Almighty God is the one true God, why does every religious leader condemn him? You must turn back right away. I've asked your husband, Deacon Piao, to speak to you, but you're so hard-headed. After he said all this, I asked him, Pastor, have you ever read The Word Appears in the Flesh? In this book are the words of Almighty God in the Age of Kingdom, the words that are in this book. They are all the truth. You must read it. Don't just condemn. But he then cut me short and said these words to me. I read it long ago. These aren't God's words, and you shouldn't read them. He read it and still said this? Yeah, yeah, yes, he, did. he did. Hearing him say all this, it really disgusted me. He was being so rude. It was just so absurd. Yes. yes. Almighty God's words are the only truth. They're mighty and authoritative. He just didn't understand. He wasn't one of God's sheep. Right. right. Seething, he then said to me, If you continue down this path, don't blame me if things get nasty. I'll go tell the church that you believe in heresy, and I'll have you expelled. You'll be shunned, a pariah forever. How can he do that? Yeah, it's terrible. So wicked. I was so stunned. I thought, you're turning the truth on its head. By believing in Almighty God, I have welcomed the Lord. How can you say that I believe in heresy? Yes. Not only do you not accept God's work, but you defame and expel me. This isn't something a long-time believer should ever do. Right. 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 A few days before, my husband yelled at me, saying, 
Pastor Jin says believers in Almighty God will be expelled from the church for good. Aren't you afraid that this will happen to you? What will we do if our brothers and sisters reject us? Some of them already know about your new belief and just ignore us when they walk by our stall. You can't ever go to that church anymore. I realized that it was Pastor Jin who told my husband to stop me. I never thought he would threaten people with expulsion to stop them from investigating the true way. It was so sinister and evil. Yeah. Yes. I always thought that he was humble and loving all those years that he served the Lord. But it was all a facade to trick people. I thought about the clergy members in that movie who acted piously around all the believers, but in secret threatened all of them and tried to stop them from investigating the true way. Pastor Jin was doing the same exact thing as the clergy in the movie. Yes. yes. I was so disgusted by him. The fond memories I had of him were instantly destroyed. Seeing that I ignored him, he left disappointed. But over the next two weeks, he came by the stall a few times to see me, trying to convince me to give up my belief and betray Almighty God. He's so evil. And then one day, he stormed over to our stall, fuming and angry, and didn't even call me deacon, but said right away, surprising me, you cannot believe in Almighty God or bring your two kids into it. Your husband's family are all such devout believers. Those kids' grandparents were both so pious. I can't let you single-handedly ruin that family. His accusation infuriated me. My belief in Almighty God means I'd been raptured before God's throne. This is an amazing thing. How could he make such a terrible accusation? Yes, how dare he do such a thing? Right. What made me even angrier was that he was not only forbidding me, but was also trying to control my kids' right to belief. How could he stop others from seeking the true way? I said, justly, sternly, and with courage, God's sheep hear his voice, and you cannot stop others from believing in God. My kids read Almighty God's words and have recognized God's voice. That's God's guidance. That's, That's right. right. When I looked into other denominations before, my kids didn't want to go. Now they want to believe in Almighty God. They're free to believe in Him, and I won't stop them. What right do you have to take that freedom away? Right. right. He stopped, speechless for a moment, then cursed me out in a furious rage and stormed off. How can he do that? Yeah, terrible. I was so shocked by what Pastor Jin did. He always supported me and prayed for my family. Why was he being so cruel? Was he punishing, abusing, and cursing me? Just because I'd accepted God's work of the last days? I was beyond bewildered. Yes. A while later, I shared Almighty God's gospel with two sisters from my old church. They were happy to hear God's words, and we talked all the time. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Before too long, Pastor Jin found out that they listened to the words of Almighty God. I don't know how he threatened them or what he did, but they stopped speaking to me and began avoiding me. I was so upset and very angry. What the Lord Jesus said to the Pharisees came to mind. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For, for you, you shut, shut up the kingdom, kingdom of heaven against men. For you, you neither go, go in yourselves, neither suffer you them, them that are entering to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Amen. Amen. Pastor Jin refused to accept God's work of the last days, and did all he could to stop others from accepting it. He used all kinds of threats on brothers and sisters. Wasn't he being 
just like the Pharisees all those years ago? Absolutely. He turned from God's kingdom and also tried to stop others. He was dragging others down to hell with him. This was evil and God would punish him. Yes. yes. Yeah. Later, I was at a gathering and I told my brothers and sisters what had happened. Sister Lee then read a few of Almighty God's words. I'll read them now. Great. That's great. Do you wish to know the root of why the Pharisees opposed Jesus? Do you wish to know the substance of the Pharisees? They were full of fantasies about the Messiah. What is more, they believed only that the Messiah would come, yet did not seek the truth of life. And so, even today, they still await the Messiah. For they have no knowledge of the way of life, and do not know what the way of truth is. How, say you, could such foolish, stubborn, and ignorant people gain God's blessing? How could they behold the Messiah? They opposed Jesus because they did not know the direction of the Holy Spirit's work, because they did not know the way of truth spoken by Jesus, and furthermore, because they did not understand the Messiah. And since they had never seen the Messiah, and had never been in the company of the Messiah, they made the mistake of clinging in vain to the name of the Messiah, while opposing the substance of the Messiah by any means possible. These Pharisees in substance were stubborn, arrogant, and did not obey the truth. The principle of their belief in God was, no matter how profound your preaching, no matter how high your authority, you are not Christ unless you are called the Messiah. Are these views not preposterous and ridiculous? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. There are those who read the Bible in grand churches and recite it all day long, yet not one among them understands the purpose of God's work. None of them can know God. Less still can any of them accord with His will. They are all worthless, vile people, each standing on high to lecture God. They willfully oppose God, even as they carry his banner. Claiming faith in God, still they eat the flesh and drink the blood of man. All such people are devils that devour the soul of man. Demons that deliberately stop people from stepping onto the right path. And stumbling blocks impeding those who seek God. They may appear of sound constitution, but how are their followers to know that they are antichrists who lead others to resist God? How could their followers know that they are demons, devourers of human souls? Amen. Amen. She then shared this with us. God's words clearly explain the root cause of the Pharisees and clergy's resistance to God. It's mainly because they're so very stubborn and arrogant. They just don't fear God at all and they hate the truth more than just anything. In the days of the Lord Jesus, the Pharisees always preached on the scriptures in the synagogues and seemed very devout. But when the Lord came to perform his work, though they knew his words were filled with authority and power, they still refused to heed them. Yes. They felt threatened and afraid their believers would follow the Lord Jesus and they'd lose their wealth and status. So they concocted rumors and prepared false testimony, doing whatever they could to condemn the Lord Jesus. They did. They did all they could to stop people from following him and then had him crucified in the end, committing a heinous sin. It's the yes. truth. From how they reacted to the Lord Jesus and the truth itself, and how they fought God for control of people's hearts and minds, it's clear the Pharisees didn't serve God. They were simply antichrists who hated both the truth and God. That's right. right. The pastors and elders who preach in the religious world now know the Bible quite well. They can preach the Bible and their theological theories, and they seem humble and devout. But now God has become flesh to perform his work. They know that for years, the Church of Almighty God has been testifying that the Lord has returned, that He expresses the truth and performs judgment. But they refuse to look into it and resist and condemn Almighty God. They cling to the words of the Bible 
and to their many false ideas, they think the Lord can only return on a cloud. They speak all kinds of heresies, and they lie to and entrap believers, keeping them from the true way. Yes. yes. They hold God's sheep firmly under their own thumbs and fight God for them. They are doing exactly what the Pharisees did many years ago. Yes. yes. They hate all of God's work, the truth, and they oppose Christ of the last days. They are the evil servants and antichrists exposed by God's work. Right. 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 Hearing her share this fellowship made me feel brightened. God's work is simply so wise. God's work in the last days exposes these Pharisees and their hypocrisy. Yes. yes. These pastors and elders, these false servants, only just resist God. They're antichrists who deny and resist Christ, devils who want to devour our souls. Yes, that's, that's right. right. Yes. Deceived by Pastor Jin, I never before could see his false hypocrisy. I always thought he served the Lord, that he was a faithful servant. That's why I saw him as my spiritual parent. When I saw the pastors and elders in that movie doing all they could to keep people from the true way, I still went by my false beliefs, thinking that Pastor Jin was different. Once I accepted Almighty God's work, and Pastor Jin tried to stop me at every turn, I finally came to see his true colors as a hypocrite and realized he was an antichrist who hated the truth and opposed God. Yes, he yes. was. I was finally free of the bonds of the Pharisees and antichrists of the religious world. I returned to God and went to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thanks Her be to God. Is that so was clear. wonderful. Yes.